female soldier guns down captain in Adamawa, there must be frustration in the military. Okay, this must be a very serious one. Uh, but let's see what led to that uh, rebel or rebellious act within the military in Adamawa state. A female soldier enforcing the curfew imposed by Adamawa government has killed a senior colleague at a checkpoint in Yola, the state capital. Uh, Governor Amadou Fintiri, Fintiri and had imposed the curfew after hoodlums broke into government warehouse and looted several items, including palliatives meant to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy. Sources told Daily Trust that the female soldier simply identified as Lance Corporal Inkiru shot a captain who tried to intervene in her altercation with civilian civilians at fire service roundabout in the state capital. Security sources told the Daily Trust that the female soldier had insisted that the motorists returning home during the curfew hours must turn back. Some of them had identified themselves as workers on essential duty, but she stood her ground. Some people stopped at the checkpoint, explained themselves as workers on essential duties, but the female soldier insisted they must turn back. A captain came forward to intervene. Unfortunately, she had already cocked her rifle. Okay. Oh boy. So she just fired and killed him accidentally, a security officer said. Can you imagine? The victim was said to have been rushed to the Federal Medical Center Yola, where he was confirmed dead, while the suspected the suspect was instantly arrested and whisked away by soldiers. Our reporter learned that the female soldier had been severally accused of harassing civilians, cocking her rifle at the slightest provocation. And when our correspondent visited the headquarters of 23 Armored Brigade Yola for confirmation, the commander, Brigadier General Mohammed Gambu, sent a message that journalists must seek appoint appointment in writing before he could speak to them. Can you imagine? So what is happening in now is exactly what this government of uh, APC has put all of us. Okay, because there's hardship in the land. Let's look at the root cause of this problem. There's so much hardship in the land arising uh, from the removal or sudden removal of the first subsidy without any plan in place. Okay, and that has led to people of Adamawa to start looting the warehouse where uh, palliatives were kept. Okay, and now to be able to manage the situation, the the government of Adamawa State, led by Governor Fintiri, had to declare curfew. Okay, because of the 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 violence that was erupting in the state. Now, under this curfew, soldiers that have been taken to that place to go and implement or enforce the curfew from the barrack there have now become something else on the road. Okay, to a point that people that are on essential duty have been asked to go back, have been have been manhandled by this female lance corporal and kiru okay so people on essential duty actually have automatic pass all over the world if you're not on essential duty then you should stay at home or stay out of the way during the curfew period but again i also remember that in those days of curfew the government or the establishment used to give something like a pass to those who are on essential duty. So when you get to a checkpoint, you show your pass to prove that you're on essential duty and you're allowed to go. So Governor Fintiri did not remember that or probably did not know about that, that people on essential duty should have a pass. And that pass will allow them to, to go to work or come back from work to their homes during the coffee period. Okay, but I'm sure this was not implemented during this period. The Inkiru herself too, that has become overzealous with her gun on the road, what is also leading to that? Okay, we also need to know why she's working the way she's working. But at the end of the day, a captain's life has been put on the line <coughs> because of a soldier's useless behavior and be arising from the state of the nation. Because the state of the nation right now is not good for anybody across the country. So I'm sure this is an escalation or 
how do I put it? A kind of um, um, you know implication of having bad system and bad government in place. Because if the first subsidy was not removed, hunger wouldn't have been in the land. There wouldn't have been temptation to to even put palliative in somewhere, not to talk of going to loot it. And why would the government put palliative in place and refuse to share it? And then at the end of the day, they will come out and then they will tell the, the world how much they have spent on palliatives. Meanwhile, people didn't see the palliatives. The same thing that happened during COVID-19 between 2020 and 2022, um, where they kept palliatives and hid them, even with items that are very perishable, items with expiry date, were kept in secret warehouses, rather than sharing them to the citizens to manage. The whole world had food bank. The UK, the US, the Canada, Italy, France, Germany, they all have had food banks during that COVID period and they were helping their people. Okay? And they were helping their people and they shared all this in their food banks. Mm -hmm. But Nigeria refused to share their own until people went to loot them and they started using soldier and navy and air force to chase and flog and arrest citizens for looting them. The same thing has played out again with palliatives in Adamawa State. And now a captain's life has been taken because of this simple uh, issue of uh, palliative. Quite unfortunate. So I say, last Corporal Kiru should be treated with dignity. She's a soldier under authority. Is there any need to order for a dusk till dawn coffee when there is no one to enforce it? Captain should have been happy to see this, to see his subject executing government order because people behaving like animal is treachery on his own. May his soul rest in perfect peace. This person talking must be a soldier or affiliated to the military in one way or the other, or part of the government. Coffee is coffee. Stop twisting the story. Attention everyone here. Watch that senior officer. Must be from, you know, what I am saying. <laughs> where, is it? where is it from? There is nothing like accidentally before you fire a rifle. There are processes. So she knew what she wanted to do. Bagam, and that is true. Not like accidentally shooting now. Eh? She cocked the gun. She triggered it. So what are you talking about? What is accidental there? Eh? So she no comment until the senior officer is identified. Because an army personnel respect their seniors. Something transpired there. And I know the northern part of their the northern part of their arrogance to men in uniform because almost all their brothers are in uniform with ranks. In in the south south part of Nigeria, most of the military personnel from the northern part misbehave and act with full impunity here. Somebody says Vasilos Copra, this is the problem with these people. No human face just because they put on uniform go face your court martial can you imagine that is that is his own view so i'm say you see our domestic problems are enough to face instead of attacking innocent country outside our territory somebody is talking about niger republic we're not talking about niger republic here we are talking about this what happened in Andamawa state the captain should have identified himself and use their language code immediately before saying anything Mm -hmm. Why must he identify himself? Is he different from the ordinary Nigerian? No, he should have identified himself as a military officer and as a senior military officer for that matter. And I'm sure the lady probably would have respected her. Something must have happened that we don't know here until the investigation is carried out. We will never know. So thank you for listening. This is the state of the nation in Adamawa State.